Okay, the reason why I am speaking today um, in regards to public comment is because I noticed during several of my visits to the district office, which I've reached out to the superintendent, my concern prior um, through email that everyone should be wearing a mask. We uh, approved a policy for mask wearing and to go into the district office to see one person out of the whole district staff wearing a mask, it's blatantly disrespectful to people who are trying to be safe um, they're trying to be proactive and, and take preventive measures. And a person that has recently dealt with COVID and had a struggle and fight with COVID, I think it's very important that you either have someone at the door taking thermometers, if you have somebody at the door with a questionnaire, you have a, someone uh, at least in, at the top of the echelon, you know, showing that mask wearing is going to be universal. If not, I think the board should bring back that policy and revise it to have masks as optional for employees. Of course, it's gonna be uncomfortable, but when you have someone like me who came into the district office not knowing that I was positive for COVID, and you know, you have someone come right behind me and I, and I shake their hand and, and they don't have a mask on, you know, it's, it's quite concerning to me because it may happen again in that case where um, someone may come in positive and another district employee might come right behind them. And if they're not wearing a mask, neither is a district employee wearing a mask or the masks are not available in the front, then there you have a case. And so I think it's very important that the district staff and the top of the echelon understands that mask has been part of a policy that has been approved. Now, if it's going to be something optional, then I think um, the board shall consider revising or amending that policy. Um, that's my really major concern is if we're going to have a policy like that where we're mandating masks, everyone is following that policy, not certain people being a pick and choose. I don't think that that's, that's fair. I don't think it's safe. I don't think it shows people being proactive. I don't think it, it shows a great example. So um, that is my, my major concern. And again, this is my second time, first by email and now by uh, addressing the board through public comment that people are not wearing masks. And so I don't know if it's because they're uncomfortable or what, but if we can't get adults to wear masks, we sure are not going to get children and, and um staff to wear masks. So um, that's that's my public comment. Um, also, in, in regards to the school reopening plan, I have a public comment about that. Um, I received an, an email um, from somebody to our district leadership as a teacher. I fully understand advocate for the person to person, face to face instructional module only K-12 programs can boast that they have such a success rate because if students do not participate, they are dropped from the program. We do not have such a luxury, 100% buy-in of students or their parents or both. And the COVID-19 measures have not helped. Until we get a vaccine, however, the whole world will continue to lose people to this virus as long as we are face-to-face. -face. I do not like to look at how this event will change the makeup of global life. But if this means Fairfax students will effectively lose a year of learning, completely unacceptable to any educator, then we must remember two things. The whole world is in the same boat and B, it is worth going back to brick and mortar, even only if one of our children or staff dies, even if only one. This is a death that is preventable. Not all teachers, our parents, our teens, our students are out there partying at local black parties or going to the beach. But we are surrounded by those who have been making self-centered and irresponsible decisions. A staff member at Fairfax Junior High, just because she is a, in a vulnerable group of age, cannot teach in person. Have you ever seen how she inspired kids over dead presidents, mostly old stories, and long ago lore, she can, however, resume such instruction 
via Zoom. Another employee is considered one of the most vulnerable because she's been fighting for her life and her immune system is at the heart of that fight. She too does not follow strictly textbook only teaching. Like this instructor, she brings dead and boring to life for her students and can continue to do so over Zoom. Teaching over Zoom has some advantages and its drawbacks as well. But its greatest advantage is that all of our district will survive this virus. Several other teachers and staff, not to mention parents and students, have fought or are currently um, in battle against cancer, bronchitis, asthma, and a host of other battles. I would guess that at any one time, we probably have over 20% of our district in a battle of one type or another that places them in a vulnerable category. Even though we have taken several measures and spent money on structural changes designed to help, but as long as we have hot temperatures and air conditioning, we are still vulnerable. How about shifting our focus to incentives to get the students online or at least on tasks and workbooks? We, most teachers I have spoken with, do not feel the need for Canvas where there are free programs like Google Classroom or Zoom or programs we have already purchased like Clever that already offer enough. We want their time and attention on subject matter, not struggling through a delivery system. We already spend money on one-to-one -one textbook and consumable workbooks. We can put our whole curriculum in their hands at the beginning of the year with some written lecture components and then reward them when they join in on Zoom for over and above the face-to-face -face instruction they need with the system. Instruction based on our book curriculum. A lot of the curriculum providers we already pay are now offering at no additional cost distant learning components. As of July 19th, we faced a serious surge in COVID numbers. CBS Local News interviewed Dr. Amish Amin for facts regarding COVID-19 and kids. Sorry, it lacks a certain cogent delivery, but I was typing as fast as, as she was talking since it was about kids returning to school. Temperature checks can be tricky. Higher temps may reflect you are running a fever or with our temps in town, I was sitting in a hot car. Yet those our carriers may not know or show a temperature. This virus can circulate through the air conditioning system and cause an increase. Our air conditioning systems do not play a role, do play a role, have to replace our air system. The amount of viral load make of young kids of less likelihood of spreading the virus, those 12 and under. But as you change to junior high and high school age students, they have increased viral load capacity and they can spread the virus like adults. In fact, teachers who are in the school with more students have the likelihood of spreading the virus. I think it'd be great. Maybe you can just circulate that letter to the board because you've exceeded the, the three minutes allocated. I will, uh, I'm almost done. I would like to, um, I would like to motion for the board to approve an additional three minutes so I can finish this email. Is there anybody that would like to motion for me to finish this email? Uh, I'll motion. Yes. Is that a first motion? First. I'll second that motion. All, do we have all in favor? Mm -hmm. It'll be I for me. Yeah, so that's not, not a voting item, and I think you have you have a motion. Well, I, 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 I asked for a motion to con for additional three minutes, Got which it. is a part Got of parliamentary it. procedure. Okay, so um, let's take action. Do we want Palmer to finish his email? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Any nays? You're on mute, Victoria. That's a nay for me. Okay, that's a nay for me. Virginia? No. Okay. All right. So it'd be great if you can just circulate that email. That way everybody has the content and that, you know, that way everybody knows what's going on. All right. I thank the board for considering that. 